Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be all about wine. I have a bunch of wines that I've just been dying to share with you. I've been slowly collecting a list here. Follow me on Instagram because I post what I am drinking all the time. All of my recommendations go over there. My handle is cgary. Uh, that is where you will find all kinds of updates when I'm not making a YouTube video that have nothing to do with wine, but that's primarily where I post a lot of my wine recommendations. And so I'm going to be creating, I've compiled a list and I thought today is the day to share with you all of the wines that I recommend that are wonderful. So I am just your average wine drinker. I have been on a journey from day one of trying a wine, thinking, oh, that's okay, it was a really sweet wine, um, all the way to where we are now. And I would say it's been a journey of expanding my palate. I don't have a wealth of knowledge. Um, I was actually talking to a wine sommelier at my grocery store and I suddenly felt like I knew nothing. I've watched a ton of documentaries on the winemaking process and it's very fascinating to me. And I love to drink it. I, I basically, recommend based on how I feel it tastes and I don't want to discredit that either because at the end of the day however much it costs or where you bought it from if it doesn't taste good who cares so in no particular order I'm gonna start off with this Castle Rock Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley at 2018 vintage I kind of held out on Pinot Noir for years my entrance into the wine drinking world was through red blends and Cabernet so I started off real bold um, so when I got to trying Pinot Noirs, they felt so much lighter to me. I always use the analogy of likening it to like your Cabernets being like a dark roast coffee, your Pinot Noirs being more like a breakfast roast. This particular Pinot Noir is a nice medium bodied, middle of the road, it's a very elegant wine. I would say it has aromas of cherry, tea, a little bit herbal spice. The flavors on this one are black cherry, plum, and spice. It's very smooth. It has a nice silky texture in the mouth and it finishes with very mild tannins. So the evolution of my wine drinking experience was I was always looking for the ready to drink ones, ones that are a little bit more sugary or fruit forward, if you will. Um, this particular Pinot Noir is gonna kind of pull back from that and it's gonna be just a little bit more soft, a little bit more elegant. Um, from what I've gathered about wine is that the longer the grapes stay on the vine, the sweeter they become and the more fermentation that happens so then they have higher alcohol content then. This Pinot Noir is very approachable. I would say it's exactly what you're going to expect from a Pinot Noir and it rivals my all-time favorite which is the Mayomi Pinot Noir. You can substitute in a Pinot Noir when you're eating chicken. I know my immediately when I think about chicken, I think about a white wine, but a Pinot Noir, because of its lighter body, uh, medium mouthfeel, it's gonna pair really nice still with those lighter meat dishes. So the second wine I'm going to recommend, I actually picked up at Trader Joe's, and it's this Andean Moon Malbec from California. It's a 2017 vintage, and this, I just opened it up, I took a sip, I couldn't even remember how much I paid for it. So when I went to look up how much it costs, I was a little shocked. And this just kind of proves my point of sometimes it's not about the price. However, most of the time it's worth it to get into that middle tier to high tier range, not necessarily the low tier of, you know, your three, four, Honestly, sometimes less than $10. Sometimes the wines aren't as mature. They don't have as much characteristics because they're not aged as long. Now, that being said, some wines are meant to be drank immediately. They're not meant to be aged in barrels. They're more of the steel aged situation where they're meant to be drank young, and I get that. But I guess what I'm saying, the bottom line is, this was only $5.99 at Trader Joe's. And sometimes it's like, you know what? Let's just give her a try. If you don't really like drinking it, you can always cook with it, make a nice little sauce with it. But this particular wine is a medium bodied. It's got jammy blackberry and plum fruit flavors, rich cocoa, earthy spice characteristics. It's complex. Usually that comes from the aging process. That's where the complexity comes within a wine is it sitting in a barrel for an extended amount of time. I thought it was very smooth, very juicy and fruit forward, easy to drink, pairs well with steak, which is what we had it with. The best price, best part is the price. So I was in a pinch and dinner was almost ready and I needed a little bit of wine to cook with. And so I was like, oh, you know, it was that time where my kids were home from school, but my husband was about to get there and we were just doing dinner and I'm like, okay, jump in the car. We're going to run to the gas station and see what they have. 
and they had this Francis Coppola Chardonnay from the Diamond Collection. It was not expensive. It was kind of like middle of the road uh, price. And I was like, well, you know, this hopefully will work out okay. So I get home, I open it up, and I was very pleasantly surprised. It was bright, it was balanced, it had aromas of guava, honeysuckle, vanilla, it tasted like pear, tangerine, melon. It was very creamy. And that creaminess comes from the, the oak aging process. And I personally, I love wine however you want to give it to me. Um, I can appreciate wine in its different facets and with different meals. And some wines are meant to be drank just as is. Others are meant to be drank with food. They're, they need the salt and they need the fat and they need the, the sugars that come from food to elevate the wine and therefore the wine elevates the dish that you're eating. So I would recommend this. I'm a big fan of Chardonnay. I think it's lovely. I know we're heading into the cooler months, but Chardonnay is so easy drinking to me that you can just open up a bottle and enjoy it on an afternoon. Maybe you're watching a movie or have some Chardonnay when you're having a little bit of dessert at nighttime or maybe you're having a little bit of popcorn. Um, it's just a really lovely, easy drinking wine. And so this brand was new to me. I think it's pronounced Eiter, not real sure on that, but this is a Cabernet from Napa Valley in California. You guys, elegant, elegant is the word that I would use to describe this wine. Layered flavors of blackberry, currants, black cherry, cocoa. Oh my gosh, so good. I love a wine that hits on all the different facets um, that you would expect from a wine. The acidity, the spice, the fruit, the oakiness, the herbal quality. And I feel like this just had that really lovely balance of all of those characteristics. It's great on its own. It had a very smooth finish, medium body. I think you will love it. Next is a wine that I buy often, especially in the summertime, and that's when I was purchasing this particular one. It's the Sea Pearl Sauvignon Blanc from Marlboro region in New Zealand, and it's a 2019 vintage. Um, this is one of those wines that, you know, it's made to be drunk young. This particular one tastes great immediately. It's super easy drinking. It's very refreshing. You have a nose of herbal notes, some snow pea, melon, fresh guava. It's a very light bodied wine with flavors of passion fruit, gooseberry, and grapefruit. This one has a nice lingering finish. And that's what makes it so delicious when you're just sitting out on your porch on a hot day. Now I realize we're not really having a lot of those. Maybe some of you are. Um, but this is just one of those really delightful wines. Um, I like to drink this when I'm having Asian. I know Riesling pairs really well with those Asian-influenced foods with the different spices and um, aromatics going on there. But I really like Sauvignon Blanc too. Next, we have a Pinot Grigio. And as you can see, I like all wines, whether it's rosés or whites or reds, I love them all. Um, and this particular one, my daughter, we were out shopping and she's like, Mom, what's my name? You need to buy this one. And so I did. I've had it in the past and I hadn't had it for a while. And I was like, you know what? Let's give her a go. So this is the Chloe Pinot Grigio from Valdige, Italy. This is a 2018 vintage. So I would describe this as very aromatic. Um, it has a very structured mouthfeel with lots of fruit forward flavors of juicy white peach, soft melon, crisp apple, floral honeysuckle. This is a very crisp, refreshing finish, meaning you can really, like on your tongue, you could really feel the crispness. So if you're needing something zesty, this would be a very good choice. Okay, this next one I'm gonna butcher the name of because my pronunciation may be incorrect. Um, this is a, I don't even know what the actual first name of it is because the label is kind of confusing. So this is where my nine, wine knowledge, I'm just your average housewife, right? Trying wines. So this Montepulciano de Abruzzo, um, this is a 2018 Cantina or Sogna. <laughs> um, it's a red wine with a plaid label. That's, that's the best I can describe it to you. I'll put it on the screen here. Um, but this is fruity. This is going to be a little bit of a sweeter, very fruit forward 
fruit heavy, sweeter red wine. You're gonna get lots of red cherry, black cherry, and a little bit of spicy pepper. That kind of helps calm down so much of the sweetness. But this is one of those wines where you can just socialize and enjoy. Of course, it pairs well with food. Um, but because it's a little bit more fruit forward and sweet, that's what I would label easy drinking. And honestly, that's where I started in my whole wine drinking extravaganza. Um, I had started with a red wine that was very fruit forward and sweet. And as the years have gone on, I've kind of pulled back from that. In fact, I go back to some of my older wine recommendation videos and I've bought them and I've retried them. I'm like, ooh, I it's too sweet for me now. But that's part of the process of, you know, your palate, it grows, just like with foods, like you try different foods and you like things that you, as an adult, would never have touched as a child, right? And so it's kind of the same uh, thought process here. But I would definitely recommend this one, it's very lovely. This is a newer one. I actually just repurchased this particular one. This is the Wolf Creek Blast Black Spice Shiraz, uh, vintage 2016. This is an Australian wine. And this particular one is a red blend. It's very smooth. It's a medium bodied wine. There is aromas of dark berries, warm cedary spice, creamy oak. It is plush. It is juicy. It has a very long finish. Um, but I would say the palette is rich. There's a lot of textures of fine fruits and the finish is very velvety. This was one of those wines I posted on Instagram and I believe my caption was something about love at first sip. Like this was immediately something, kind of like the previous one I just talked about, the Montepulciano uh, wine. Pour this and enjoy. So good. Of course you could enjoy it alongside dinner or dessert or whatever it is you're doing, antipasto, appetizers, that kind of thing. I just really enjoyed this. This is gonna definitely be still, once again, a fruit forward heavy, um, a little bit sweeter of a red wine. Now, sweeter is relative. <laughs> you know, some people might be like, oh, that's not sweet at all. I think it's I think it's pretty good. I think it's it's not tipping that scale of syrupy sweet. I, I'm not a huge fan of too sweet of wines. I prefer something that's kind of pulled back from that a little bit, but yet has those berry characteristics because I think that's what makes these wines approachable is the berries. Next we have a Chardonnay. This is the Goldsmith, Gold Schmidt Singing Tree Chardonnay. Uh, this is a 2018 vintage from the Russian River Valley in California. I discovered this one this summer. This is beautiful. The label is what really sucked me in. It's got the beautiful birds on the bottle. This is very fragrant. The fragrance notes on this, you're gonna get some white peach, some Asian pear, mango. Um, it's very bright and crisp with lemon, passion fruit, and melon flavors. This has a little bit of a mineral, mineral um, flavor in the mouth that kind of leads toward a nice finish. There's a light use of oak in this particular one. It's not too creamy. Uh, for those of you that don't like too much oak in your Chardonnays, I would give this one a gander because I feel like the oak in it just helps ground it a little bit and give it more complexity than just being that uh, more unoaked flavor in the mouth. I was really pleased with this one. This was another one that I immediately wrote down, was like, I need to repurchase this. Next, we have my heart and it is a Cabernet. This is the Lone Birch Cabernet from the Yakima Valley in Washington. This is a 2018 vintage. This particular one has dark cherry, spice, toasted oak. It's a very smooth finish with soft lingering tan tannins in it. Um, it is full bodied, it is food friendly, and it is very approachable. And to me, that's the perfect Cabernet because then I can drink it by itself if I want to. And when I say that, it's usually like, okay, it's the weekend, it's Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. I don't feel like making dinner yet. I just wanna enjoy a glass of wine or you know, maybe a friend, friend over or something and we just wanna sit and chit chat. I like to have these kinds of wines on hand that are a little heavier on the fruit forward so that they are more approachable and easy drinking. Now mind you, I do like the ones that have a little bit more dryness to them. Maybe they're a little more tannic, but those serve a place too because when you are having, say for instance, a really cheesy, heavy sauce lasagna, you're gonna need those bigger, bolder reds that aren't so fruit forward and have, you know, just, I guess, the word I would describe it is, 
I say cotton mouth feel, but that's simply because you're drinking it without eating. But when you add those cheese, the fats and the butter, it awakens and livens the wine. And so those have their place too. Okay, and the last one. I am so excited about this last one. I discovered this. I ordered a glass of this at a restaurant in town here at Hotel Emma. It's called Supper. And they have this on their menu. And when I was looking over the menu, I was looking for something I hadn't tried, first of all. And I was keeping in mind what I was gonna order to eat. And then I saw this. And I was like, white Pinot Noir. Now that is a grape I have not tried. And I kind of chatted with the waitress about it, but at the same time, I was pretty much, my mind was made up, I'm gonna try that, because life's too short to keep buying the same wine over and over when there's so many choices. And I ended up ordering this. It's the Left Coast White Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley, Oregon. So we're circling all the way back to the beginning of this video, same region, um, 2019. This is a beautiful, beautiful bottle. You guys, this is amazing. You're talking about a very floral nose, cherry, pear, citrus, a little bit of spice. It's very, it's sweet, but not sickening sweet. It's like a very delicate, delicious, fruit forward, smooth, a little bit of spice, sweet. It's got a little bit of minerality going on, a little bit of crispness, and the finish is a little bit of tart fruit. And could I describe any more perfect of a wine? Probably not. I bought this at Total Wine. They had two bottles left, and I bought both. Now this is gonna push you up into, I think this was $25. So this is gonna be a little bit more spendy, but I assure you, you will not be disappointed. Perhaps pick out your menu around this or just enjoy this on its own. I did purchase an Italian Pinot Noir to try. I have not tried it yet. After going to my brand new local H-E-B, they had a sommelier there, and I was chatting with her. She lives here locally, but she is so well-versed in wine, and she just gave me a plethora of information, and I suddenly felt like um, Game of Thrones. You know nothing, Jon Snow. I felt that way. Um, I, You know, I've just really navigated this world through buying and trying, and then, you know, watching documentaries, maybe doing a little bit of research, but nothing crazy. Just, you know, like pleasure walking this whole, whole thing about wine. And so she opened my eyes to a bunch of, I, got, I bought Spanish wines, I bought Italian wines, I bought more top tier, top level wines, I'd say. I bought wines more in the 25, 20 to $25 range. Not that, I'm not knocking the more inexpensive ones, I'm just saying I'm, trying a wider variety now. So this next cycle of wines um, that I'm going through, hopefully we'll have some real winners. I want to try to stay on top of this more because I really am finding a true passion in this and um, it's just so interesting to me and it tastes good. And it's just, it's so fun to learn about cooking and wine and the pairings that can happen. And it's just, it, it excites me. And things that excite me, I wanna share with you. And I know a lot of you are fellow wine drinkers as well. So follow me on Instagram for immediate wine recommendations. And please stay tuned for a future wine recommendations video. And please feel free to check out my previous ones because if, you, if any of you are newer to wine or you wanna start and you don't know where to start, please reference those because the you know the further years we go back, the less I've tried, and you just kinda kinda take it all in and make your list and then head to the store. And by all means, if you have someone you can question, please question them because I don't know everything. Um, in fact, I know very little from what I've gathered, um, but to, I'm just, I'm excited to learn more and I'm excited to bring you more recommendations. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Happy wine shopping. I hope you find something fantastic to have with dinner this evening. And I look forward to chatting with you very soon. Bye guys.